Solar and wind power have proven to be cost competitive with fossil fuels, but energy storage is essential for them to be truly effective power sources. While lithium batteries have enormous potential for many of the devices we take for granted today, there are certain challenges with scaling the technology up for grid use. Expensive casings, overheating, short lives, and battery cell supply are only a few of lithium technology's problems. But what if I told you that molten metal may be a superior battery than lithium ion, with lower costs, easier construction, no maintenance, and a longer lifespan? In this video, we're taking a closer look into liquid metal battery technology, specifically Ambry's liquid metal battery. But before we begin, make sure to keep yourself informed and engaged by subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell, and turning on all notifications so you won't miss out on our latest uploads. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, or IRENA, more than 80% of the world's electricity could come from renewables by 2050, according to a recent research examining the implications of the energy shift. Because of falling costs and the development of green regulations, solar and wind power might account for 52% of the total electricity output. Their intermittency, on the other hand, is sometimes considered as a roadblock and a stumbling block for renewable energy. On the other hand, it has peaked public interest in energy storage like never before. Lithium-ion is the most popular and widely used energy storage technology, which should come as no surprise. Lithium-ion batteries have dropped in price by nearly 80% in the last 5 years. However, lithium-ion batteries aren't ideal for storing hundreds of kilowatts or megawatts at a fixed location. Not to mention that they come with significant safety concerns. The most serious risk associated with lithium-ion battery technology is what we call thermal runaway, which is a cycle in which excessive heat generates even more heat internal cell flaws, mechanical failure, damage, or overvoltage can all contribute to high temperatures, gas buildup, and potential explosive battery cell rupture. Thermal runaway can spread from one cell to the next without disconnecting, producing more damage. Furthermore, a battery management system or BMS failure can result in overcharging and the inability to monitor temperature or cell voltage. Finally, Lithium-ion batteries are vulnerable to mechanical damage and electrical surges, which can cause internal battery short circuits, resulting in all the problems I mentioned previously. While I'm not against lithium-ion batteries, they do have significant drawbacks. When you combine those concerns with the still high cost of lithium-ion for large battery installations, it's no surprise that other forms of large-scale energy storage technology are generating a lot of interest and research. Liquid metal batteries are one of them. That's right, we're talking about molten metal. To refresh your memory, a typical battery consists of an anode or a negative electrode, a cathode, which is a positive electrode, a separator between the two electrodes to prevent short-circuiting, and an electrolyte that fills the remaining space in the battery. Lithium ions can be stored in both the anode and the cathode. Thus, as energy is stored during the charge cycle, lithium ions flow from the cathode to the anode via the electrolyte. When the battery drains, the ions travel back towards the cathode, supplying the load. Unlike typical batteries, where the electrodes and sometimes the electrolyte itself are solid, liquid metal cells can have all of these components in a liquid state. Professor Donald Sadaway of MIT pioneered the study of liquid metal rechargeable batteries using both magnesium antimony and, more recently, lead antimony. This technology consists of a liquid phase metal anode, metal cathode, and salt electrolyte. The anode is a low density liquid metal that readily gives electrons, while the cathode is a high density metal that readily accepts them. A medium density molten electrolyte connects the electrodes, allowing ions to flow between the anode and cathode. Consider filling a bottle with a small amount of syrup or honey, water, and oil. After things have settled down, you'll observe a three layer segmentation in the mixture. This occurs due to the different liquid densities, which is exactly what we see with liquid metal batteries. The three components naturally settle into three distinct layers and maintain separate throughout operation due to variances in density and emissibility, which basically means they won't mix. 
Powdered anode, electrolyte, and cathode materials are layered in the cell. When heated to a point where they melt, they naturally separate into three immiscible liquid layers, which are controlled by density differences. The technology, which uses molten salt to separate magnesium and antimony, was first proposed in 2009. Because of its low cost and low solubility in the molten salt electrolyte, magnesium was chosen as the negative electrode. Because of its inexpensive cost and high discharge volume, antimony was chosen as the positive electrode. Liquid metal batteries are similar to conventional batteries in terms of operation. Positively charged metal ions pass from one electrode to the other through the electrolyte during discharging and recharging, while electrons flow to the external circuit to provide the load. However, liquid metal batteries must be used to prime the pump. External heating is required to melt everything during the initial startup of liquid metal. Even in a molten state, the battery maintains its operating temperature by generating heat wherever current flows during charge and discharge cycles. It's intended to be used on a daily basis rather than sitting unused for weeks at a time. Every day, we should aim for 5 hours of charge time, then 7 hours of idle, 5 hours of discharge time, 7 hours of idle, and so on. This is why a battery like this makes sense for storing and using renewable energy on a daily basis. I'm sure this topic will generate a lot of discussion about solid-state batteries, but liquid metal batteries have a lot of advantages over solid-state batteries. Because the electrodes and electrolytes are liquids, they have a quick electrical response and don't require membranes or separators, resulting in lower mechanical stresses. In comparison to other conventional batteries, this improves long-term stability and allows for lower-cost self-fabrication. Another factor for the lower manufacturing costs is that the materials utilized are plentiful and less expensive than alternative resources, but I'll get back to that in a moment. Unfortunately, this, like everything else in the realm of technology, isn't flawless. Liquid metal battery cells are made up of components that are extremely corrosive. Due to the metallic solubility of the electrode in the molten salt electrolyte, they have high self-discharge rates for some chemistries. In the end, they don't tend to keep a charge for very long. The three liquid layers also make the battery more sensitive to movement and potentially harmful when the liquid electrodes come into contact, resulting in a short-circuited cell and brief heat generation. This isn't true for all types of batteries, which I will discuss later, but it's not something you'd want in your phone since it's really hot, but it's ideal for stationary applications such as grid energy storage. Although this technology has numerous benefits that could make it an ideal solution for grid-scale energy storage, it is still in its early ages of development. However, when it comes to commercial liquid metal batteries, Ambry, based on Massachusetts, is the name that springs to mind. Ambry was found in 2010 by Donald Sadoway, the inventor of liquid metal batteries, David Bradwell and Luis Ortiz, with fundings from Bill Gates and Total, the French energy company. They hold 50 patents in the United States and abroad, ranging from cell chemistry to manufacturing processes. This strong global patent portfolio gives them a significant competitive advantage. Ambry's product is a DC containerized system with shelves of cells, a weatherproof outer enclosure, thermal management, and a battery management system that is ready to install. It's perfect for applications that require a lot of energy density, frequent cycling, long life, and efficiency. To create a milliwatt-hour scale system, cells are placed onto trays and connected within a thermal enclosure. Because the system is insulated and self-heating, no external heating or cooling is required to keep the batteries at operating temperature. Furthermore, by connecting an unlimited number of Ambry systems in parallel, the liquid metal battery can increase storage capacity. The company's current system can store 400 to 1000 kilowatt hours and generate up to 250 kilowatt hours of power. Ambry's battery has an efficiency of over 80% over a wide operating range, similar to lead-acid batteries like the ones in your car, which have efficiencies of around 80% to 85%, but significantly less than most lithium-ion batteries which have efficiencies of over 95%. The cells are shipped at room temperature and remain dormant during travel, providing considerable safety benefits during assembly and transportation. Heaters inside the system bring the cells up to operational temperature once it's delivered to the final location. 
Even though the system is designed to operate at a constant temperature for the whole of its life, the cell can withstand dozens of heat cycles ranging from ambient temperature to 500 degrees Celsius without losing performance. Unlike lithium batteries, Ambry cells are extremely resistant to overcharging and discharging and have a far lower rate of deterioration. A normal battery degrades over time when it's deep cycled or charged from 0 to 100%. Lithium ion batteries can lose 20% of their capacity in just two years if they are subjected to a daily deep cycle. The Ambry battery, on the other hand, can be deep cycled every day for 20 years and lose only 5 to 10 percent of its capacity. Deep cycles are common in energy facilities because the batteries are charged and discharged on a regular basis to compensate for power grid fluctuations. The liquid metal battery from Ambry is made up of a liquid calcium alloy anode, a molten salt electrolyte, and a cathode made up of solid antimony particles, allowing for low-cost components and fewer cell construction stages. However, the Ambry battery is currently more expensive than lithium batteries in terms of price. Nonetheless, as production technologies advance, the price is expected to fall. With the expenses of electrodes, there is a cost advantage over lithium-ion. The active materials cost only $17 per kilowatt hour, whereas lithium-ion costs roughly $51. Between 2020 and 2023, Ambry-based systems are expected to cost 15 to 30% less than identical lithium-ion systems. And, like many other innovative energy storage technologies, Ambry is starting with demonstration systems. They hope to have a 1 milliwatt hour commercial system constructed, certified, and developed for trials by 2022, and 250 milliwatt hour exported for commercial applications by 2023. To get things started, they recently signed a deal with TerraScale. TerraScale and its data center deployment partners will integrate an Ambry energy storage system for their Energos Reno project near Reno, Nevada, as part of their arrangement. There is now 10 milliwatt of solar generation on the site, which TerraScale plans to expand to 500 milliwatt, as well as 23 milliwatt of active geothermal power with a 48 milliwatt rated capacity. The partnership is underway and includes delivery of 250 milliwatt hours of Ambry's equipment to TerraScale's first project in Reno, Nevada, commencing in 2021, stated Adam Briggs, Ambry's chief commercial officer. The Ambry systems are especially well adapted for the project's high desert operations, for moving huge amounts of renewable solar load, and for grid system peak shaving capability, says the company. With all of the advantages of liquid metal I mentioned, there are limitations because most existing technologies run at temperatures above 240 degrees Celsius to keep metallic electrodes molten and liquid, causing major concerns. There's also the issue of corrosion in addition to the complicated temperature control. Professor Gi Hua Yu and his colleagues at the University of Texas at Austin investigated a room temperature liquid metal battery with a sodium-potassium alloy anode and a gallium-based alloy cathode. The metallic electrodes in the team's battery remained liquefied at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, the lowest operating temperature ever recorded for a liquid metal battery, according to the researchers. Although the researchers have been working on this project for three years, it is still not finished. Finding a less priced alternative to gallium with comparable performance remains a big challenge. Overall, liquid metal batteries have a lot of space to catch on for grid energy storage because of their cycle stability, low maintenance requirements, and reduced cost and availability of manufacturing. By 2027, it's predicted to be worth $6.7 billion. It's critical to realize that no single technology can rule them all. Having more options like these will only aid our efforts to stabilize electricity generation from low-cost intermittent renewables like solar and wind. But what are your thoughts? Do you think storing energy in molten metal is a good idea? Do you believe it has a potential to gain traction in the next years? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you like the video, hit the notification bell and turn on all notifications so you can stay up to date with our latest uploads. See you guys in the next one, and remember, keep life living bullish.